So over the last few weeks or so, I've done quite a few videos talking about my transition to using Vim as a full-time writing tool, something that I use for my daily job, and it, so far it's gone really well. I've, Like I said, I've made a few videos about this, so one of the things that I had to figure out how to do when I made this transition was figuring out how to get the documents that I was creating in Markdown, basically, through Vim, into a format that I could actually send to WordPress or my bosses or wherever. At first, I thought I was just going to have to, like, copy and paste stuff out of Markdown or out of Vim and into, like, Google Docs. And that would have been, a, I mean, it would have been fine. I would have continued on, but it wouldn't have been a great solution because it's not, it, it wouldn't have just, wouldn't have been great. Things would have been broken. Like, the getting the headers to work in Google Docs that were written in Markdown wouldn't have been easy. So this led me to trying to find a tool that would allow me to convert Markdown into regular formatted text. And I had heard about Pandoc, but I had never really understood what it was for. Like, I'd never used it before. And honestly, I never thought that I'd have a reason to use it. Like, I always associated Pandoc with LaTeX, which is something that is used for scientific and technical papers, and that's not something that I ever write. So I never really considered even using Pandoc until I had this need. So today what I thought I would do is talk about my brand new favorite app, and that's Pandoc. Now it's been around for a long time, like a long time, but it is so cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this is. So basically, at a very non-technical level, Pandoc will take one file and convert it to another type of file. So, so if, for example, you have a Markdown file and you want to translate it to a EPUB, you could do that. If you wanted to translate, say, a, a docx file to an ODT file, you could do that. I don't know really why you'd want to do that because they could still both be opened in LibreOffice, but you could do it. If you wanted to translate a ODT file to, say, um, org mode, you could do that. Uh, that is one of the neat things about Pandoc is that there's not really a limit on what you can do. Now, I'll talk about a few of the things that are kind of janky with it in a little bit, but for the most part, if you want to go from one file format to another file format, it's really awesome, and it does a ton of these. So if we scroll down here, you can see that there's just a ton of stuff that it supports. So you mark down, ODT, DocX, a lot of wiki formats, EPUB, LaTeX, DocBook, things, I mean, just, just a ton of different stuff, CSV tables, a lot of stuff, obviously PDFs and stuff as well. So that is really all... Pandoc does, so it's not as if it's going to be a tool that everybody has a need for, because like I said at the beginning, this is not a tool that I expected to ever have to have a use for until I actually did. So I can understand if this doesn't really appeal to everybody, but for people who do writing in certain formats and need to get those formats to different, you know, another format, it's an amazing tool. So let's just go ahead and show you how this works, and then we'll talk about a few of the limitations. So if we open up a terminal here, and zoom in. And then if I go into my documents folder, I have a file called test.md. So if I zoom into this test.md file and look here and get rid of that stupid annoying fold, I don't know why Vim has been folding everything on me. I don't know why. I don't understand it. It's been doing it on multiple computers. I'm getting really tired of it. But anyways, that's a Vim problem. We'll I'll deal with that later. This is basically just a markdown file. There's a there's headers, there's a there's a uh, table there, there's another header, and there's a, a, a column of text. Nothing extravagant. Now, you can go through and put in metadata if you want to put in made metadata, and you know how to do that. I never really have to do that, so I've never really explored how to do it, but you can do it if you want to. And there's just a ton of stuff you can do in Markdown. Like, if you know Markdown, there's a ton of stuff you can do. You can do equations, you can do... Uh, uh, bibliographies if you wanted to, you can do links, you can do images, you can drop in images and stuff like that. You can do a ton of stuff. So that's Markdown. But let's just say we wanted to take this and put it into a PDF or a, a an ODT file. Let's just do an ODT file because that's easier. So we get out of this. Hopefully this works for that stupid fold. We want to translate a Markdown file to an ODT file. So first we need to have Pandoc installed. So if you're on Arch Linux, do sudo pacman dash s pandoc if you're on a debian or ubuntu based distro apt install pandoc just like that and now i'm happen to be on mx Linux right now so this is what i would do for me i hit that and then enter a password 
and it would tell me that I actually already have it installed, but for you, you just go through hit yes, and it would install it. So once you have it installed, the command to do this is pandoc, and then the name of the file you have already, so in this case it's test.md, and then dash o, and then the name of the file and the extension of the t file type that you want. So in this case, we want ODT. So we want to go through and do test.odt. And then if we do an ls here, we can see that we now have a test.odt. And we can actually open that up right here. And as you can see, we now have the column, we have the header, and we have... <laughs> The, the, I had an image in there too, but it's really big, so that's why it's taking up a whole page there. And then we have another header here, and we have the column of text that I had. So that's how it photo ran. You can see that it got the headers right, it even got the columns right, and it inserted the image just like you'd expect it to. It's a huge image, so it doesn't really show up all that great, but whatever. You know, you can go through and do that. Now, that was a markdown file, and we translated it into an office document that can be written and changed and edited in LibreOffice if you want to. Now you can, if you wanted to, we can, oops, I tried to quit that with Z, capital ZQ. Did you see that? <laughs> I've been using Vim way too often. Okay, we can close this. We don't need to save it. We'll go back to this here and let's just remove test.md. What we can do now, if we wanted to, we could go to something else. So let's just say we wanted to open up to, uh, translate that ODT file into HTML. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do that. So we do pandoc test.odt-o and test.html. Do that, it's done. Now we can actually vim into test.html and we can see that it's gone through and put all the proper HTML tags and formatting right here inside a file that you can then open up into uh, like a, a web browser or whatever and see what it looks like. So we can actually go through and do that. Let me open up a, a if we open it up in a, in a web browser, we can actually see that for the most part, it translated it just fine. It didn't get the link to the, the image correct, but that's okay. If we scroll all the way down, our the rest of our text and stuff is here as well. So as you can see, it translated it from an, an office document to HTML just fine. I'm not sure why the link to the wallpaper didn't come through. I'm assuming it's just a path problem. So that's what Pandoc, Pandoc does. There's a ton of other stuff it can do. Now, the one limitation I found is there's some formats here. If we close this and go back here, there are some formats here that can't translate directly to another one. So for example, let's say you have a, an ODT file. You can't translate that directly from ODT to Markdown. It just doesn't work. Instead, what you'd have to do is go from ODT to HTML to then Markdown. So there's there's some reason why that's the case. But as long as you don't mind doing that extra conversion, it comes out just fine. It's just a matter of knowing that sometimes... So if we actually, we can if we open up the terminal again, and, and we go into the documents thing again, and zoom in here, do LS. Now we have an ODT file. So if, if I wanted to translate that, so pandoc test.odt-o into test.md. Okay, so usually it doesn't work, but it, I'm guessing that it did work in, in this case. So we're just going to vim test.md and uh, open it up. Yeah, it works just fine. Um, kind of. I mean, there's some weird translations there, but it worked fine that time. I don't know why. It, normally it doesn't work for me. So... Maybe I've been doing it wrong all this time, and I just didn't know. You guys saw that live on camera. I learned something new. It, maybe it's just for longer documents. I don't know. But the, the point is, is that sometimes you may come across where it gives you an error. And that means you'll have to translate uh, or transition a file into like an intermediate, intermediary file format before you can go to the ultimate destination. My point of bringing that up is that if you come across a file format that won't convert into another file format, which is possible. Like I've, for whatever reason, that, that ODT to MD didn't work for me the first few times I tried it for like the last three or four weeks. So I don't know why I did this this time because probably because I was recording it. But the point is, if you get to that point, don't give up. Go through and do a Google search because chances are someone has tried the exact same conversion as you and have has come up with some kind of path for you to get to where you need to go. So... There are several more things that you can do with Pandoc that 
I just haven't kind of dealt in, delved into because I just don't need them. So, for example, if you're going through and converting H an HTML like website to a PDF or something, and you want to go through and make sure all that website CSS is embedded right in with the HTML into the PDF, there's a flag for that. And there are other flags and options that you can use for other things that have to do with LaTeX, with PDF, all those things that I really haven't got into yet. But f the point is, is that if you're going to get into this, there's, it's, um, there's much more to it than just the few things that I covered in this video. So I highly recommend checking out the documentation on the website, checking out the man page, because the documentation for Pandoc is fantastic it's really really good and basically anything you want to do has been documented on the website or in the man page and if you're trying to get from the something simple to something more complicated like latex or pdf or whatever and you need to know more information on how to do that the documentation is a good place to start so that is pandoc it's my new favorite linux application right now because it saved me just a ton of time and Anything that saves me time just makes me happy. So if you have examples of how Pandoc has saved you time or if you are interested in this app, leave your comments below. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A, Devon, East Coast Web, Patrick O, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, F. Tool, Steve A, CyberGuy, Linux, Garrett, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin e, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, Daydog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark, Bandit, Six, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.